Hey, so, hi everybody. Uh, today's been a day, a really, really, really sad day. Um, we had to say goodbye to our cat, Alex. Really, really hard, you guys. It was, um, it always is, but Minu and I are on the opposite side of the world. Our good friend Nicole came and rescued everybody and took care of a lot of the heavy lifting. And we wound up sitting here on the floor, FaceTiming, while we had to say goodbye to Alex. And it was painful, man. And she was in the arms of those who cared about her, even if they weren't our arms, so. It's hard to believe that I'm, I'm, I'm not going to get to see her face again. She's been with us for 10 of her, we think, 12 years. We adored her. She liked our dogs. <laughs> and she was a, a cherished part of our family. In those 10 years, never touched her. She never came into our home. She slept in a, in a house on, on our porch outside of our home. Yeah, Alex was a feral cat. And maybe there are some who, who would be watching this and say, well, come on, that doesn't count. It wasn't part of your family. I'm telling you, she was a part of my family. She was, a, she was a part of my heart, and that part is missing right now. Those of us who mourn the passing of animals in a very real way, we are disenfranchised in our grief because... A lot of the world would say, wait a minute, you just, you lost a pet. Get over it. You, you've, been, you've been grieving for a couple of days now. <laughs> well, if that's disenfranchised, having a feral family member is even <laughs> one step beyond that. I, I want to tell you about some of the other family members that we've had that have left us the feral uh, family members. Um, the first one who comes to my mind is Eddie, and Eddie was, he was a very, he brought a lot of this into focus. Anyway, I'll, I'll get back to Eddie. Everybody from Sophie, the wonderful little girl, Oliver, um, one of our oldest who passed away, Vincenzo, Baloo, who was a a Bengal who just appeared <laughs> out of nowhere. Like, it's a Bengal. Alex's surviving family members, Big Head Todd, uh, Enzo, who was uh, Eddie's brother, who is still around, and one guy that we have yet to trap. We're, we're coming for you. But back to Eddie. Eddie was such a huge teacher in my life. And long story short, Eddie demonstrated every time we would try to put him in that house-shaped box that he would just not have a part of it. And, and if we had him in the catio, he, he lost that spirit that made him him. I was forced to meet him in the middle and realize that he'll never be in bed with me. He'll never be snuggling on my chest while I watch a movie. He won't be that guy. He'll be Eddie out in his house on the porch. I learned to love Eddie on Eddie's terms, by Eddie's rules. I, I have this thing that I, I wrote about him. I, I said, and it finally came to me that he wanted our love. He just didn't want our house. Whether it's a feral cat or whether it's another human, it doesn't matter. Relationships are complicated. Love is complicated. Expectations of love, very complicated. I want you to want me as much as I want you. I want you to want to be a part of my life. Show love in a way that I am accustomed to receiving it. People ask me what a tree dweller is. Say hi to Eddie, tree dweller. I know, my boy. Boy. Eddie expressed his love in a very real way. What? 
Alex expressed her love in a very real way. But she would follow us down the street. She would bump noses with Pasha the dog. Pasha peed on a tree. She'd walk around and she'd pee right near him. Oh, again, thank God we have amazing friends, family, caretakers, veterinarians, people who, who made sure that she felt no more pain. One of the things that's so hard is because you can't touch her, can't pick her up, that um, it was a very fast, very aggressive cancer um, in her mouth. And luckily, our, our family member, human family member, Julia, noticed it uh, and noticed something was, was up and she went to the vet. So she wasn't in pain. Here's my thing, if they're feral, they're still my family. I will love them just as fiercely. I will protect them to the best of, our, of, of my ability. I will lay it down for them. The love that you feel for a cat in your home, and then there's a wall, and there's a cat in the house on your porch. Luck has basically dictated those two sets, right? but they both deserve to be honored for who they are and loved for who they are. And yes, the rules of relationship change, but that if, if, if I accept the world by Eddie's rules, there's a wonderful opportunity for love on the other side of that. Now, in the meantime, after, after everything I'm saying, let's, let's just talk for a second about taming or not taming. If you trap a litter of small kittens, you can tame, socialize, get them ready for adoption. Absolutely, you should do that. If you have an adult who is clearly a feral, then by and large, it's probably a good thing to let them be who they are. There are cats who, let's take Gabby for example, had many litters in this neighborhood that she was in until Minu finally was able to trap her because she was a pretty cagey cat. But she was in a neighborhood that they were actively trying to kill her. There was a bounty out on her head. Minu had to take her and bring her home, resigning herself to the fact that Gabby may be a house feral. And with Gabby, given time and the freedom to be who she was and the invitation to meet in the middle, chose something different. I'm never gonna sleep again. Wonder why they named you Gabby. And that's Gabby's story. The point I'm trying to make is that every cat is an individual. Tame cat, feral cat, somewhere in the middle cat. They are individuals and there's a potential for a loving relationship as long as we meet them on those terms. There's no less love, as you can tell, between Alex and I than with Mowgli and I. It's just different. It looks different. And whether that cat is in your lap or on the porch should make no difference. The only thing you have to change is your approach and your willingness to meet them where they live. I hope someday I wouldn't have to say it, but I feel like I need to. And what I have to say is, Alex and every member of our feral family, and for those of you who have feral families, not one iota of that cat is less than anybody else. And every feral cat needs to be known as an equal, respected, as a cat, right now, there could be a feral cat on your block who has so far been slipping by unnoticed or you just haven't looked hard enough. That cat is in need of your love, your guardianship. Prove ourselves to be guardians of these cats is TNR. We trap, we neuter, we vaccinate, we microchip, we deworm, we de-flee, and then we put them 
out in the neighborhood, in the home that they know, which is outside. And that opportunity to take them back to the vet if, at the first sign of illness, to keep them warm in the winter and cool in the summer, to keep them well fed for the rest of their lives, that's love. I owe it to Alex, I owe it to Eddie, I owe it to Sophie, I owe it to Oliver, I, I owe it to Big Head Todd and to Enzo and, uh, and Vincenzo and Baloo and everybody else to tell this story because Alex's story is their story, is the story of maybe the cat under your car. I hope Alex is watching right now. I hope she, she knows how much we love her. I hope, I hope you know how much we loved her. I hope you take just a second for her and maybe for the, the cat under your car. That was a lot. I'm gonna call it a night. Uh, much love to all you guys. Put some love on the humans and the animals in your life tonight and hold them tight. Blow them a kiss. Give them some treats. Meow.